March 2, 1943. In the sky, a fight between Japanese and American aircraft breaks out. At sea, 6,900 Japanese soldiers watch the aircraft fight from a convoy that is supposed to take them to La, New Guinea, to continue the fight in the Pacific. Japanese soldiers watch the showdown in awe, knowing they may soon find themselves at the mercy of enemy bombers and ultimately suffer the consequences of their country's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. A few minutes later, a second set of American planes is flying at high speed, but low, opening the way with their machine guns and moving directly towards them. At that moment, the Japanese soldiers understood that their fate was cast and they prepared themselves for the impact of the bombs. From the beginning, the Japanese generals were aware that this was too risky a mission, but they still decided to move forward in the hope that Allied tactics would continue to fail as they had been doing. However, that day things were radically different and what started as a simple risk mission turned into a real massacre. Don't leave your screen. Because in the next few minutes we'll tell you what happened in the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, and how the Allies changed their tactics to achieve such a precise and deadly blow. But before continuing, we want to introduce you to our new channel, Military Might. Here we'll explore the extraordinary world of the armed forces, armored vehicles, weapons of mass destruction and the most important military conflicts of today. You'll find the link to subscribe in the description of the video and in the first comment. Are you ready? Let's get started. Following the pivotal American victory at the Battle of Midway in June 1942, the Allies launched an ambitious offensive to seize the Pacific. They first attacked Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands. The campaign lasted months, but in December of that same year, the Japanese generals realized that they had no possibility of holding those territories anymore, so they had to focus their efforts to resist in New Guinea. Mainly, they had to strengthen the city of La, to the east of the Oceanic country, facing the Solomon Islands. To fulfill this task, on January 5, 1943, a Japanese convoy made up of five destroyer ships and five troop transports moved from Rabaul to reach La. However, they were intercepted and attacked by aircraft from the United States and Australia, which left a balance of 69 Japanese aircraft and one ship sunk. Despite the attack, the Japanese need to reinforce the La troops was great, so they immediately began planning a similar mission for the beginning of March. Due to the Allied power in the area, the plan was extremely risky, with only a 50% chance of success. The other option was to mobilize troops from Madon, which involved a 230-kilometer journey through inhospitable swamps, mountains and jungles. Finally, the Japanese generals went ahead with the convoy plan, ignoring the great danger. The Allies quickly detected Japanese preparations and, through intercepted and decoded messages, accessed tentative dates of enemy movement. Preparations also began on the other side. One of the great challenges for the United States was to improve the effectiveness of airstrikes. These were very common to intercept the Japanese supply line, but in the January convoy raid the techniques had proven not to be effective enough to sink enemy ships. To improve the result, the air forces adopted new tactics. The biggest difference was that they would approach the target at a low altitude, head straight for it, and drop the bombs from that position so they crashed into the side of the ship, instead of dropping them from above. This would give their enemies less of a chance to intercept them and react. For a few days, they trained with the remains of the SS Pruth, an ocean liner that ran aground in 1923. At the same time, the various bombers were modified to add machine guns in order to neutralize the anti-aircraft artillery of the target ships. Finally, March 2nd arrived. The Japanese convoy, made up of eight destroyers, eight troop carriers and an escort of 100 fighters, had left Rabaul a couple of days earlier, but had gone undetected due to two tropical storms that made it difficult for the Americans. However, at 10 a.m. on the second day of March, the convoy was spotted by an Allied Liberator. From the nearest base, eight B-17s took off to attack, followed by another 20 that departed an hour later. Upon reaching the convoy's position, a furious dogfight broke out between the jets of both forces. 
As the B-17s battled in the skies against the Mitsubishi A6M0s, a crew of Lockheed P-38 Lightnings appeared and found a clear path to the fighters. They flew over the water at an extremely low altitude and fired their machine guns at the convoy to destroy its defenses. Finally, when the rival was cornered, they dropped dozens of 450-kilogram bombs that crashed violently against several ships, beginning the slaughter. The attacks continued during the afternoon and even in the following two days, maintaining the same tactics, but with different levels of success. The Japanese ships continued their way as best they could, without large reinforcements, besieged and at the mercy of the Allied planes that did not stop attacking whenever they saw the opportunity. Little by little the convoy was divided or weakened due to casualties. One part returned to Rabaul, while another remained behind to rescue soldiers stranded at sea with the help of other Japanese ships and submarines. By the end of March 4, the battle between the Allied air forces and the Japanese convoy was over. The new U.S. attack strategy was incredibly effective and brutal. In total, the American and Australian planes used 233,847 rounds of ammunition and dropped 271 500-pound bombs and 253 1,000-pound bombs. For Japan, the mission was a resounding and costly failure that began the campaign for New Guinea in a fatal way. Although they knew that an adverse outcome was more than possible, the scale of the Allied attack took them by surprise. Of the 6,900 soldiers who were going to La, only 1,200 arrived. Another 2,700 were rescued from the sea and sent back to Rabaul. The remainder, nearly 3,000 Japanese soldiers and sailors, died in the attack, more than the Americans killed at Pearl Harbor. However, the human losses were not the only ones for Japan. Of the eight destroyers that departed for New Guinea, half were sunk, while the eight transport ships were totally pulverized by enemy aircraft. Simultaneously, in the sky, 20 fighters were shot down. On the other hand, U.S. casualties were minimal. Two bombers, four fighters and 13 killed, making the Bismarck Sea battle one of the most lopsided in all of World War II. Although the Allied media exaggerated the dimensions of the victory, going so far as to say that 15,000 enemy soldiers and more than 100 planes perished in the battle, the truth is that the defeat was extremely hard for Japan. The effectiveness of their enemies in attacking the convoy made it clear that they could not attempt another such mission and made it more difficult to move equipment and supplies by sea. The campaign for the strategic territory of New Guinea had just begun. And now, we come to the end of the video and we want to ask you, what was the main cause of the brutal Allied victory, the change of strategy for the bombing or the lack of preventive measures by Japan? Leave your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.